I created a functional friendly NPC in my Portal 2 Workshop map who follows you around, pathfinds through portals, holds down buttons, and automatically runs through portals at your command to help you solve the abandoned human cooperative testing track. I will be showing you the basics of how this works today. Before we even get into how the pathfinding works, if you have any experience working with NPCs in Portal 2, you probably know that the walking is broken. If you ask an NPC to walk to a specific point, it looks like this. Very buggy, um, not smooth. Thanks to the Portal 2 speedrunning community and the developers of Source Auto Record, I discovered all you need to do to fix this behavior is just be recording a demo. So we'll just run record demo, that'll start recording a demo, and now it's completely smooth, and it works perfectly. So, all you need to do to fix the buggy walking animations is to have a point client command, we will name command, and then get a logic auto, and in your outputs you're going to add on map spawn, target the command entity, output a command, and then record demo. And this can be any file name you want, you could make it super specific, so it's like demo to fix buggy walking thing. Make sure you also have this command on load game so it will run every time you load a save. Demo files are usually pretty small so it's not going to impact your disk space that much and running that command to the same file name is just going to automatically override the old demo. I did put a disclaimer in my map description of where to find that file in case you wanted to delete it. So now every time the map loads, or a save in the map loads, that command to record a demo will automatically run, and your walking slash running animations for your NPCs will be fixed. Now that all our animations are fixed, we can actually get started on the pathfinding part. Usually that would be controlled by the node graph in source games, but the node graph is broken in Portal 2, so we will be using mostly scripted sequences. First of all, we're going to need a generic actor, so go ahead and place down one of those. We're going to name him Mike, and then get your world model. This is male 07, and we're just going to put him right there. We're going to grab a scripted sequence. And we're going to name this one the go to player sequence. And then our target NPC is going to be Mike. And then change your move to position to custom movement and change the custom move animation to sprint all. This is the fastest one. And then go into your flags and make sure repeatable is checked. Drag that scripted sequence right on top of your info player start. 16 units up just for better visibility. Make sure that yellow line is facing the opposite direction that the info player start is facing. In your logic auto, we're going to add an output on map spawn, target the go to player sequence, and set parent to player, and make sure you add a 0 0.10 second delay, otherwise it won't parent. We need a logic timer. I'm going to name this the go to player timer with a refire interval of 0 0.5 seconds. And in our outputs, we're going to add on timer the go to player sequence to begin and then also on timer we're going to add the go to player sequence to cancel after 0 0.49 seconds. Target your generic actor and then add a brush around him. We're going to tie this to be a trigger multiple. Set your parent to mic set the delay as low as it will go and then in the outputs we're going to add on start touch the go to player timer to disable and then add on start touch the go to player sequence to cancel and on end touch the go to player timer to enable now let's compile that and jump into the game and we should see we are now being followed around and as soon as I come within the bounds of that trigger he will stop when I leave the bounds, he will start following me again, so he should just run straight up to me and then stop. If we give ourselves a portal gun, unfortunately he will not follow us through portals yet. This is because he cannot see through portals and he doesn't know he can go through portals. Place down both of your prop portals. We are going to name this one the O portal. I'm just going to align it to the grid, copy it over. And then this one is going to be our B portal, which we will change to be the blue portal. 
Now place down two scripted sequences, one for each portal. We're going to name this one the O portal sequence and parent it to the O portal. And then the target NPC is Mike. And then we're going to change that move to position animation to be sprint all again. Make sure you go into your flags and check repeatable. Make your grid size as small as it will go and put that right on top of the prop portal and one unit behind and make sure this yellow line is facing into the portal. Mike will automatically be teleported by portals, we just need to tell him to walk through it, which is why this scripted sequence is one unit behind the prop portal. Copy the O portal sequence and put it right on top of the blue portal, one unit back, and then make sure you go into the properties and change this to be the B portal and parent it to the B portal. Now in our outputs for the prop portals, as soon as the player is teleported from this portal, we want to stop pathfinding to the player, so disable the go to player timer, and then also make sure to cancel the go to player sequence, and then we are going to begin the O portal sequence. As soon as Mike is teleported or on entity teleport from me, we are going to cancel the O portal sequence. This is because he's never actually going to reach the sequence because it is behind the portal. We also want this same output on place successfully. This is so that anytime you walk through a portal and then immediately move it, he's not going to keep trying to go to that old location. And finally, once Mike is teleported from this portal, we are going to enable the go to player timer so that he starts pathfinding to the player again. Select all of this, copy it, go into your B portal and paste it, and then just make sure that you're going in and changing all of these entity names to be the B portal version, just like that. Let's compile that and jump into the game, and unfortunately, this doesn't work. That is because he sees that scripted sequence as being inside of the wall, so he won't run to it since it's inside a solid object, he'll just immediately cancel that script. So we are going to have to doctor up our portal surfaces, so I'm going to cut this into its various pieces. The only parts that we are going to need are the parts he could potentially walk through, which is this three parts. We're going to tie this to a funk brush, and we're going to invert the NPC class exclusions. This means that Mike will not collide with these walls whatsoever, but physics and the player and portals still will. Now these walls will not see a leak, so I'm going to go ahead and do that really quickly. Now that all my leaks are sealed, I'm going to compile this and jump into the game, and we should see wherever I go, Mike will follow me even through portals. We can go up top, and if I place a portal that he is currently running towards, he will just stop, and then I can go back up and retrieve him back, and we can go straight back through. Very nice. Even though we didn't change these surfaces from being world brushes, Mike is still able to come out of portals that are placed on them. He's just not able to walk through portals placed on them, but obviously we wouldn't need him to anyway. All of this logic becomes a lot more complicated when we add in button interactions, chamber lock interactions, and then the automatic getting directed through portals when you're standing on a button. This is what all of that logic looks like in human cooperative testing. This is a little bit outside the scope for this video, so I won't be covering it, but maybe if this video gets enough attention, I will in the future. I'm sure plenty of you out there that are more advanced at Hammer than me could reverse engineer this and make it a lot more clean than this logic is anyway. I also won't be covering how to get Half-Life 2 models in Portal 2 in the first place, but I will add a link to the VDC page in the description where you can find the tutorial on how to do that. So if you really want me to decipher this mess, leave a like, but for now, thanks for watching.